Yeah, so a package has to be delivered. So I hope it won't be delivered at the time when we're in a meeting. But if that happens, the, I need to get out and I ask my assistant to cut it out. Um, okay. Maybe it's good if you do a little bit because now I can see the top part of your head. Yeah, that's okay. And what was it that you were doing yesterday with the microphone? Because you were moving uh, something around. and. I think I, I think I just took the sides of my computer and moved it slightly because I, I yeah. don't have a separate microphone. So I think I think that's what I did. So I'll try and keep my hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's yeah. already it's already recording, but uh, good. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my tea here. Hi there, welcome everybody for yet another episode of The Power. Yep. Okay, shall I do start again? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I can't see me anyway. <laughs> that was a quick move. Okay, yes. let's start again. Hi there, everybody. Here we are with yet another episode of the Power of Women in Business talk show, where I interview inspirational and successful business women who are willing to share their expertise by doing business internationally. And today I am going to interview Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Tineke. Hello, everyone. Hi. So my guest, Rachel Shackleton, is related to the famous ex uh, explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton. She's a hotelier by background and works as a corporate trainer focusing on leadership, communication skills and customer excellence. She's also a qualified medical herbalist, naturopath and kinesiologist. I do it wrong again. <laughs> I have to ask my... Uh, so how do a naturopath? Is that it? Naturopath, yeah. Naturopath. Okay, so yeah. I'll start the introduction again. Naturopath and kinesiologist. Rachel Shackleton is related to the famous explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton. She's a hotelier by background and works as a corporate trainer, focusing on leadership, communication skills and customer excellence. She's also a qualified medical herbalist, naturopath and kinesiologist. She's also working with individuals to restore balance and well-being in mind, body and soul. Hi, welcome Rachel. Thank you very much for inviting me. I feel very honored. Ah, oh, so well, the honor is completely mine as well. Thank you. So uh, the reason why I wanted to talk to you, Rachel, is because you told me you have a specific expertise by having your business in Russia. And I've ha I haven't interviewed anyone who can talk about this country where things go differently than we're used to, I suppose. So um, let's dive into this topic so that all our listeners and our viewers can learn what it's like to do business in Russia and maybe also listen with another ear, like what's it like to do business in another culture, all right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, working in another culture, for example, Russia, does that influence your lead leadership style and how? This is a this is a fascinating topic because clearly when we look at different cultures, the culture influences how people behave in different situations, and leadership falls under this influence in 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 different ways. And certainly, I found many differences when I was working in the Russian culture from a leadership perspective than perhaps working in a Western culture. Mm -hmm. um, one of the differences is that um, Russian people are generally very comfortable in a hierarchical structure and a more autocratic type leadership style as opposed to a, a flatter organization as we would have probably in the, in, in the West, um, and more democratic leadership style. Now, obviously, we can't 
say all companies are the same and all Russians are the same or all Dutch are the same or all Americans are the same, that's not possible because we all have our unique cultural programming. Um, however, in general, th th this was one of the things that I found that I had to come to terms with because my style of leadership is more uh, towards the uh, consultative, the collaborative and the democratic rather than the autocratic where you basically telling people what to do and they go away and do it and then they come back and say right okay I'm ready for some more. Um, that I found quite difficult to orient to and certainly I didn't um, want my team to to function in that way I wanted them to function more from their own uh, individual experience uh, individual initiative and style and work um, for themselves rather than, than than waiting for me to come along with a whole a big long to-do list mm. and what what's it like to um how how did you adapt because did you start to become autocratic or did you enforce or how should i say that your leadership style to your team um i, I think you know any any um effective leader is able to to work along that continuum if you like between um autocratic and democratic and use all the styles mm. in between certainly my goal was to be more democratic uh, as in running the business that, that that i'm running it with a team who take responsibility and ownership um for working with me and for achieving the goals that we decide but you couldn't do that overnight it took time to help them to understand where I wanted to go and why I'm going there to um, build their confidence that they can actually do it to um, encourage them to take initiative and not feel that they're going to be punished mm -hmm. for doing that um, to um, th think together as a team to come up with problem, uh, not with the problems, but with the solutions to problems rather than come to me always and say, well, this is my problem. What am I going to do about it? Mm -hmm. So it was a case of, 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 in those cases of talking it through with them and saying, okay, well, what would you do? And then help them to see perhaps the bigger picture yep. and understand what they might have missed or what might help them make that decision and then um, it could be that I made the decision at that time but then the next time I'll be right okay when you come to me with a problem and you want a solution you should have a solution already ready and we can discuss your solution mm, exactly. and then eventually letting them go uh, completely because they didn't need me after a while except in certain uh, areas where it, I kept it that way for, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And how, how was this for you? Uh, you were the business owner. What, what, what was the business you were in, uh, Rachel? So I was doing uh, training and development services. So it, it offering um, different training, leadership, management skills, customer excellence, mm -hmm. team development, um, to uh, corporates, both to uh, local Russian companies and to uh, multinationals. Okay, so um, I suppose uh, at that this is quite a while ago. Eh? At that time, you were an exception, a foreign woman having a business. Um, what was it like to do business for you in this masculine environment uh, like Russia? Yeah, so... Uh, um the, the Russian environment definitely is very challenging. Um, I went there in 1992. Um, I um, ran my business up until 2013 when, when another company bought my company, but I still go backwards and forwards to Russia. Mm -hmm. um, the, the environment of business um, has shifted from a more masculine environment to a more balanced environment that we, we see also today in the West, where you've got mm -hmm, women mm -hmm. and men, but still many of the top positions are held by men. And that meant for me that uh, it, 
it's almost that you're you're looked at as not being capable as a woman to to, to do this. It is never ever said. Yeah. And certainly, I don't want to cause anybody any uh, pain by what I'm saying because I don't mean this in any uh, negative way. However, you you have to be very very confident in yourself. You have to be very confident in what you could do, and very confident in the way you delivered that, so that you came over that initial bump of well, what does she know? To my goodness, this lady knows her stuff, um, and and then you you you're, you're on an equal footing, and then it would go reasonably smoothly in mm-hmm. most cases from then onwards. Yeah, I think this is still a strategy that we women have to use to to be impeccable with our knowledge and whatever uh, we do. Otherwise, we are not always taken seriously. Yeah, so that's that's that was back then, but I think this is still the case for business women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what was your most difficult leadership challenge whilst working in Russia? Um. <laughs> There were many, there were many uh, challenges whilst working in Russia. It's a, it's a very challenging environment, and if you like challenge, it's the place to be. I can definitely sell it from that point of view. <laughs> However, I think the most difficult for me was the 1998 financial crisis, um, and this was a situation that I've never seen in my history to that point and I sincerely hope I won't see it again because no. it's very very frightening mm. when you have a certain amount of money in your bank account and within 24 hours it's it's diminished by about a thousand percent um and you know you've got your bills to pay and you've got your staff to to pay etc etc um at that time it, it, it was it, companies were reacting immediately and the Multinationals, especially, were sending any foreign uh, team member home because, obviously, when you employ foreigners, you, you, they're paid expatriate, you know, education for the children, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it was a big cost for any company that's going through this this crisis, in which everybody was. There was nobody exempt from this. Um, and then once that wave had gone, then came the next wave of the local people also being put uh, into redundancy and losing their jobs basically overnight. And I looked at this and I thought, that this, is, this is just terrible because if I also put my staff on the streets, how are they going to feed their families? Yeah. Um, which for me was uh, a, a big challenge. I came to the solution of I'd rather keep them all. And the only way I could do it was by paying them all exactly the same salary, which was very much reduced. Um, but I knew they could feed their families on it. Um, and that, uh, for me, was a, was, was a compromise. I put it to them. And all my team members accepted this solution with the exception of one person. And for that, I asked them to be committed to the business for three days a week. Mm -hmm. And I expected them to come into the office and work on things that we generally don't have time to work on. So updating filing, uh, cleaning out databases, developing new products, doing some research, all these things that we all need to do but we generally it sort of goes to the bottom of the pile when we're we're all busy and things are going very well and the the main thing behind that was I said to them they they have to hold me up not pull uh pull me down because I'm the one that that is going out to try and generate some business and therefore they've got to do everything they can to keep the environment positive and fun but at the same time, productive. Wow. Out of that, we used to eat together. We, I would bring in something simple for lunch, like a pasta salad, and we'd sit around the, 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 the table and we'd, we'd, we'd eat together. And that was also a good... It was a good thing to do under those times because, of course, they were worried as well as yeah. I was worried. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it, 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 was, it was good. And uh, I was literally on the last 400 dollars in my bank account and I thought well this is it time to go home mm. literally packing my suitcase 
And one of my clients called me and said, okay, Rachel, let's go. I have a $50,000 contract for you. Wow. And I was just, <laughs> I, I, it was almost like I couldn't believe my ears. <laughs> yes. So, so that was, that was about a two year process. Wow. And then of course you could stay and, uh, the crisis, it wasn't very long, eh, this, uh, this one, uh, was it? It was, it was about a year and a, a year and a half, a yeah. year and a half, something like that. Wow. So, you know, this, this shows to me real entrepreneurship, uh, Rachel, and feminine entrepreneurship as well, not letting go of your team, trying to make it a community and even in this bad time for them, but also for you, uh, creating an, an atmosphere where they could still thrive and, and, and not having the panic and the fear be the override. I think, wow, I, I admire you for this uh, solution. It's, uh, and actually, I know some, uh, one of my clients, uh, she's uh, from Greece. They had to do the same. Uh, you know, in Greece, they had a bad crisis for many years already. But, um, yeah, this, uh, this is what, what can happen uh, to, to keep... Every, the, the obvious is get rid of people, get rid of people. But it's creative what you did. Everybody pays less. Everybody gets the same. Amazing. I love that idea. And it worked out very well for you, eh? Because I, I assume you're, that none of them wanted to leave the company uh, when things went right, because I assume you started to pay them more and you had such a committed team and the whole thing was, everything was in order to grow. Yes, yes, yes. It, 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 you know, when you go through a bad period, whatever it is, whether it's personal or business related or whatever, there's always something good that comes out. And mm. we were a much stronger team. And of course, everybody was, as you say, they were, they were, they were grateful and they were very committed. Yeah. And we were, we were on the starting block when things picked up and we just took off and it was great. Yeah. But, but all your foundation was ready, your filing, all your str strategies, your new products. So, cause you, you, that's what you did instead of getting rid of people, building on the foundation of your business. Yeah. Very, very, very clever. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have another question what do you credit your success to for example in terms of your actions your leadership business model other things um, I, I think I think resilience uh -huh. I think there are a number of factors I think resilience uh, because you have to be able to get yourself out of bed every morning whether you have for clients to visit or you don't and thinking, right, where am I going to find those people and take those knock, knockbacks that inevitably come in, in, in business. That's just business life. Um, I think also determination to succeed, which is, which is combined with resilience, is that you've got to have that clear focus, those goals in mind. Where, where are we going? Why are we going there? Um, and how are we going to get there, of course, and be determined to step by step um, go towards that goal and celebrate the successes yeah, yeah. Uh, along the way and not just be focused to the end result, but, but also to, to, to celebrate those successes on the way. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it would be wrong of me not to talk about teamwork. And um, I think working with a team is one of the most phenomenal things that you can do uh from the from the point of view of not always having to be the leader um just be a team member sometimes allowing other people to step up when it's their area of expertise listening to people um taking on board their ideas because you're not the only person that has them your team members also have a massive input in this area and of course having fun to, yeah, together yeah is a great thing and of course the last thing is uh, uh, the customers um you, you you can't do it without your customers and therefore for me customer loyalty is right on top of the pile okay working with customers from an open perspective from an honest and um perspective um, and and working with them to see where they're going and how can you best support that process um, I think is a secret for success yeah so how about how big was your team uh, Rachel um, latterly it was 25 so not not a huge team you, you employed 25 people excuse yes. me 
that's for a woman for a women business that's a large team uh, Rachel <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is a large team. <laughs> and what I, what I like about uh, this story of you is that many consultants who train leadership, they're on their own. You had a business, you had your team. So you, when well, you preach, you have, well, maybe not you, but maybe your team members, but you were in there every day and things are changing all the time, you know? Uh, so I, I love that, that you, that you practice what you preach. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of people teaching entrepreneurs or business people or leaders things and stuff that they don't do themselves real time at the moment, but you did it. Yeah, I think personally, I think the the uh, I like your point because one of the things that in my training team was I was I only had trainers training in areas where they have personal experience. Mm. So customer 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 excellence, they had to have worked in that environment for at least five years. Mm -hmm. Management skills, run a team, etc. Because you can only bring value. If you if you've been on that that ground floor and understand the challenges that that you get when yep. you're in that role, yeah, I I, I I totally I totally agree. I, a, another question comes to my mind: Did you already speak Russian when you? Because uh, why did you move to Russia? So I moved to Russia. This this connects to my first uh, qualification of being a hotelier. I moved to Russia to work in a hotel. Oh yeah in St. Petersburg and I was training director and then they acquired another hotel so I did the opening for that hotel and then three and a half years in um, the management company was changing and I decided I didn't want to go through that I'd gone and I'd done what I went to do and that's when I had a number of cl clients for the hotel asking me well well, what are you doing if you're leaving? What are you going to do? And I told them, well, I'm probably going back home. Well, please come and do some training for us. Wow. And it was literally, it was, it was like that. And, um, you know, and, and being Russia, they, uh, they said, well, look, you know, we can't pay you black. We have to pay you white. You have to, you know, proper invoicing and taxation. I said, well, that's not a problem. I'll just open a company. <laughs> So, so I you, called you, a you friend did. and said, how do I open a company? Yeah. Okay, Rachel, send me a name and I'll sort it out for you. Oh, I love this. I love this. You <laughs> just did what, what there. But that's, that's because of your customer loyalty that this possibility appeared. And because you value uh, their opinion and you want to be loyal to them, all of a sudden you were a businesswoman. I was scratch with nothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And no Russian language. Either. Exactly, because that was my original question. Did you yes. speak Russian when you moved to Russia? No, nothing. And there was nothing written in English anywhere uh -huh. at all. Uh -huh. And it was only, it was after a year, a year and a half, I decided I better go and learn this language. Okay. So I started taking Russian lessons. And was it when you were working in uh, as the hotelier? Or was this already when you had your business running? No, I started when I was working in the hotel. Yeah, exactly. So you, so you yeah. could speak Russian when you started your business. Yeah, well, I couldn't speak Russian. I could speak bits of Russian. Okay. <laughs> but 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 I was on the way. Yeah. yeah. But do you think that had that had helped you? Speaking. Yes. Yeah. I um I uh, I think local people in general, and particularly the Russian people, they're marvelous in this way. They really respect a foreigner who tries to speak their language because it's not the e easiest language mm. to learn um, and they love it if you can make some kind of communication with them. Oh, and, beautiful. Uh, I think that's really important if you want to yeah. uh, get the respect of any local community is at least to be able to say something in the local language. I think, I th yeah, exactly. I think that's for every country, not even just particularly for Russia, but a any country that you want to go and do business. It makes it easier, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So then you changed careers. You traveled back in 2013 to the UK, to the UK, and you qualified as a naturopath uh, and medicinal herbalist. So um, why did you change this direction? 
Um, I, I, I actually qualified as a kinesiologist back in 2006, so I was, okay. already, I was still in Russia. And my goal when I came back was to actually slow down a little bit, Timothy. You know, we all, we're all, unfortunately, the aging process goes on. And I'm <laughs> oh. <thinking> about <laughs> what I'm going to do in my old age. Um, so my goal was to actually work as a kinesiologist. And then I realized that one I miss. Maybe, maybe you need to explain what this is about, because I don't know if everybody understands what it is. Yes, so kinesiology is it's an alternative or complementary therapy. It works by using the muscle feedback system in the body to understand where there are blockages and then to unblock those blockages so that the energy flows effectively so the body heals itself. So you can That's you have a specific way of talking with the muscles? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Um so, so I realized that I wasn't, I, I didn't feel fulfilled. So I went off and studied herbal medicine and naturopathy, which I qualified in, as you mentioned at the beginning. And I was working with my clients and do work with my clients with these three modalities. But I realized I miss working with groups mm -hmm. also um, and the training side. So I then sat down and said, well, why have I got all these skills, the, the training, the leadership, the health. And now I understand Good that question. Um, I think companies and cultures, particularly in the West, are beginning to realize with the speeding up of our business world and our lives generally through technology, um, the demand on the physical and the emotional side of who we are is huge. And I see a lot of people come through for individual treatment who have anxiety and stress-related diseases. And that also made me think, well, what's going on? And now I realize, because there's more research going into mental health in the workplace, that actually I need to combine these two sets of skills and work with organizations on bringing in corporate well-being mm. on a um, on a corporate cultural uh, level and I'm not just talking about putting a healthy option into the canteen and offering yoga classes I'm talking about it coming in from their head down in the organization and being something that works within the business goals because if you have healthy well happy employees whether they're management or non-management you have higher productivity you have better loyalty and thus you have greater profitability mm -hmm. so it's a win-win all round yeah and you're back and you're back to training leaders again but in a different way exactly yeah exactly it's just a broader perspective so i still work with the leadership skills but i do a lot of work on self-leadership and the health side of getting maximum from yourself, recognizing the symptoms of when you're pushing too hard, both in yourself and in and your yeah, members, exactly. yeah. um, and what to do about it mm -hmm. before you end up on the, in the doctor's waiting room, not understanding what hit you. Okay, and do, do you have a vision of expanding this business again on a scale that you did in Russia, or do you have other plans? Um, I do have a vision of expanding um, this and what I'm working on now is building my profile to get more uh, speaking slots for corporate organizations um, where maybe I come and I speak at their, I don't know, yearly annual event or at their team building event and we do something around this that can be fun as well as um, inspirational. Um, I'm also working on a series of uh, e-learning modules that mm -hmm. can be available for corporates and individuals to buy. And I'm also working with um, leaders at the moment in, in, in bringing more knowledge into the leadership training about yeah. themselves. And, and would you say that the strategies you used back then in Russia to get new clients and the strategies you use now, you can still use those strategies? I know there's also now the online uh, and social media, 
which was not uh, that much available when you were in Russia. But could you say that you can still use and fall back on the strategies you used there back uh, then? I think so. I, I think I think the social media helps you to get out there more, to, 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 to meet a bigger audience, if you like. Whether it's your audience, that's that's you know depends yeah. on how you do that. Um, but I think this this idea of you know being in contact with companies through networking events, through calling them uh, cold or through a recommendation from somebody else, because I'm not very good at cold calling myself. Um, I think it, I think it still is very valid um, because at the end of the day, I think people like to see a person. Yeah, definitely. And not not just see you on a website or in a blog or uh, wherever it, it might be. Yeah, and I sometimes wonder if that's just for our age uh, and, and, and time and age because I was just speaking to an, uh, an entrepreneur and they organize an event and I said, did you do a press release? And he said, no. I said, And then I immediately realized I knew his event organizer and I know she's very young. And I said, okay, now there's the age gap because press releases still do work, but young people are so uh, busy with the social media and that's their only strategy. Um, so yeah, I think it's always good to, uh, to connect real time, but I have, I have my thinking that this is gonna disappear a bit, that this is really what we like to do our age and that the young people, when they become our age, I wonder what it would be like if they still do business the same way. But that's another discussion. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Rachel, is is there? This is this has been so valuable, you know. Um, you running a big business in another country uh, and hearing how it all started off by just people asking you to please, please, please start a business. <laughs> that's that's an amazing story. Um, and, and you just went for it and developed yourself as the, as the, the businesswoman, um, which, yeah, most, most business people do it that way, yeah? We don't go yeah. to school and, and, and learn how to run a business. Some do, but it, in, in reality, it's always different. Yeah. So is, is there anything that you would like to add to the conversation or how we can get in touch with you or do? Yes, it, indeed. I mean, people that are interested in uh, either knowing more about me or reading some of my blogs, um, you can read the health blogs on the Green Key Health webpage. You can read the corporate personal development blogs on the... Uh, Green Key personal development page. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn and would love to link with anybody who is interested to link with me to see how you we might uh, just chat, cooperate in whatever way it it uh, it might be. Yeah, so feel free to link with me on on LinkedIn. Good. That's a, that's a good invitation. And uh, for everybody, of course, you know eh, when you've uh, been watching our show, in the end, there will be an ad with all Rachel's details. Go to her website, do uh, read her blogs or um, get in contact with her. And if you want to have a healthy organization, I think you're the person to go to, uh, Rachel. Um, thank you so much for contributing uh, to sharing your wisdom and your knowledge to all the other women who, uh, who want to expand internationally and go global. It was uh, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, Tineke, and uh, thank you to everybody who's, who's listening. Um, it was really my pleasure, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck, and especially you, Tineke. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.